Okay, so now we're just going to set up the control for this bulky um, back snail shell. So we're just going to create it like a global control that we can move about. And later on, you know, we could always layer more deformations on top of there like we did with some of these arms. But we're just going to set up the main controls so just so we can get like this bulk movement and get the base of the back here to follow along. So first things, I'm just going to reference the mesh, bring up the script editor, and I'm going to run the box mail script again. And again, you can use boxes you've used before, create your own controls, or if you've got it on your shelf, I'm just using that mail script again to quickly create that. And actually, I quite like the rotation of this. I quite like that pivot point there. So what I'm going to do is, with the shell selected, display the local rotative axes. I can hide the mesh. Actually, I can't hide the mesh because that's going to take away that axis as well. So I'm just going to hide polygons and hide uh, nerves surfaces. And we can still still see that handle there, that axes. I'm just going to vert snap it to it, and then I'll go show all to bring it back, and I'll scale this up. And I'll show non, show nerve surfaces, nerves curves, and polygons. And we'll hide the control curves just so we're working with this. And if there's any control curves still visible, like these new ones that we've created, or we didn't add the IK controls, I can just reselect them, right click on the layer, add selected objects to hide them. And what's right, actually, we'll get this extra to show. So these two display curves here, add them as well. Okay, so I'll just start to shape this box curve into the sort of shape we want. So I'm just going to select these CVs, just to get this bulky shape. Scale these out a bit. So just a big bulky shape to represent that big bulky shell. Okay, so that's quite good. I'm going to switch the um, object display drawing overrides to yellow. Okay, so now all I'm going to do is I'll show all again and sh hide the mesh. Actually, before I hide the mesh, I'll take away the local rotative axes for that shell, hide the mesh, and I'll display it for this curve. And I'm just going to create a joint on its own and vert snap it to there. And I'll increase the radius to about 5 or something or 8 even. And just by increasing the radius I can just it just tells me later on when I'm skinning this that I'm wanting this to have quite a large influence in this area. It's going to have no effect on the skinning itself because when it skins on the closest distance it just takes it from the pivot point. So this radius isn't going to tell the skinning to give it more weight but me just seeing this, this is going to remind myself later on that I'm telling myself I want this to have, to have quite a large weight around this area. So when I'm uh, painting the skinning weights, I'll be able to remember that. I'll just hide the local rotative axes again. Okay, and I'm just going to rename this. Since this is going to be a bound joint, so JTBN underscore. Um, I'm just going to call this the shell base. And we could really, if we had, if we found that this wasn't good enough and we had some sort of bad deformations in this area, we could create like a ribbon spine at the top and the bottom, or create even a NURBS plane that's got a U and V. So these ribbons at the moment, we've just used a straight line of joints. But if we set it to have 
more spans in U and V, we could add, you know, the hair follicles on U and V and have like a grid of joints along here. But for this, because it's quite smooth, there's not going to be a lot of movement in this top shell, it's just going to be wiggling about a bit. So we could probably get away with just having this one joint in there. Okay, so I'm going to move that one joint into the bound joints. With the curve selected, fleet history, freeze transformations. And I could get this to sort of align along with this bottom curve here that we've got. So I could get it so the axis is aligned with this sort of the base of the shell there. But again, I'm just going to do like little bits of wiggling. And I actually want it to be level so I can wiggle this left and right without having to worry about twisting in line with this shell. So we're not too fussed about that. So for that, I'm just not, not going to put a rotate offset group on this. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm just call it CC underscore shell. And I'll put that in the control objects. Okay. And now what I can actually do is um, this shell is not going to really be skinned with anything. It's sort of a solid object. And I'm not going to add any more like finessing or any more extra controls in here. So I'm just going to actually select this curve, shift select the actual shell and just go to constraint parent and I'll maintain offset so basically just rotating this is going to rotate that shell and I'm going to do the same to the joint so select the curve, shift select the joint, constraint parent so now we're rotating the shell and we're rotating the joint as well it might not look like the, the joint's rotating but if we show the rotative axes we can see, yeah, it's rotating. Okay, so I'm going to add that to the control curves as well. Oops, add selected. And now what I want to do is add an offset group for this, so we want it to be able to follow this chest control. So as we rotate this and move it about, we want the shell to move along with it. So what I'm going to do is, with this group selected, hit Control G, press Insert and Vert Snap to this joint here, because if we remember the joint is in the same place as that control curve group. Okay, so I'm going to select the curve, I'm going to press Insert to come out of the pivot point mode. I'm going to copy the name, press Up to rename this group GRP underscore shell off for offset. I'm going to do the same as we did before with um, this upper body control, this follow chest attribute. I'm going to edit attribute follow chest. Minimum of zero, maximum of one, default zero. Add. And then we're going to start hooking this up. So I'm going to go to the um, rendering edits and hypershade. And I'm going to go graph, add selected to graph. So adding that curve in there. I'm going to press up to get the rotate offset group. Add selected to graph. I'm bringing two blend color nodes with these two selected set all everything to zero in the channel box and then I'm going to right click take follow chest and left click to blender right click follow chest left click blender so now that follow attribute can change the blenders of these okay so now what we're going to do again is if you remember we created a tie control and we made that in the extra nodes to hide so extra nodes and extra nodes to hide so I'll just turn the visibility on you can see there's that tie control and because we're matching the same position as the chest control so the upper body was following this tie control 
and which was the chest and we want the shell to follow the same chest control so we can actually use the same tie control here so I'm just going to go to graph I've selected the graph and then all I'll do is tick the translate try that again to translate and if it's not working you can drag and drop as well and find translate take the translate and put it into color one I'll reload right and put the rotate into the color one of the second blank color node and actually I'm just going to reload left reload right with the group and the blank color and take the output and put that into the translate with the reload left for the rotate blend color node so I'll take the output and into the rotate and close and we'll see what, how that works there so now follow chest set to 1 you can see it's following along with the chest which is what we want and then we can rotate this about get to follow the chest, take it off follow and now it's not following the chest so we could get you know there might be some really cruel person that tries to rip his shell off so we could get his shell hooked on something up here and his chest trying to move away so that shell's left behind ok cool and I'm just going to expand this a bit more And I'm going to bring the util utilities. Just tick. Remember the names that we had for the other ones. So we had BC underscore up body chest follow rotate. So I'm going to do this with the same here. Paste the name in. So this is the upper body. So it's not the upper body. This is the shell. And it's following underscore chest follow. And this is the translate. So trans. Copy the name, paste it over here. And this is going to be the rotate. And then I'm just going to check in here if there's any that we haven't. And there's um, four here that we haven't named, so I'm just going to rename these now. So if I select, if I graph, so I'm just going to select these click this button up here, square with the two arrows which is inputs and output connections just so I can graph that oops, deselect that last one just graph these far and then I can see what they're connected up to so they're connected up to these mid controls so I know what these graphs belong to, what these blend colors belong to so this is the left one so I'm going to paste the names in here so this is the BC and it's not the shell, it's the antenna so mm, and and this is the antenna mid and it's following I'm just going to put that as the antenna so it's the antenna mid following the antenna and we can hover over the connections so in here I'm just going to hover over this connection here and nothing's coming up and hover over the one below and I can see the translate so just by deduction I can tell this bottom one's the translate and this top one's the rotate so I'm going to copy the name And again, this is the left one. Just making sure we've got the l making sure we put left in there. Because copy the name. Make sure we put instead of trans, we put rotate. The next blend color down here. Paste the name in, and the same for the other side, which is the right hand side. So th this one would be the right rotate. this one down here, the right translate ok so now everything in there has been named, we know what all these connections do again here's a multiply divide node oh, I've been, been a bit naughty here, not naming things so I'm just going to have a look and I can see that this is the forearm twist that we set up earlier set up quite a while ago so 
remember that point 0.5 was connected to the forearm twist so what I'm going to do here is this is the right one so MD from apply divide right under underscore for um, twist copy the name and paste it onto the other multiply divide node so really we should be naming these as we go along but it's always going to get to a case where we're too excited to rig obviously so some of these names are going to get left behind but always just keep checking in here and make sure we go ahead and start renaming these as we go along so we can see that like these condition nodes I can see it's a stretchy condition just by the name so instantly I know what I'm dealing with up here okay so I'm just going to rehide that extra nodes to show to hide even just rehide that okay great so now we've got the rotation for this working and we've got the follow so we can get to follow so we've got that nice blending between the two